could see real impacts across Main Street and across the country. CNBC's Eamon Javers, thank you, sir. Do appreciate you. You bet. I want to bring in Senator Bernie Sanders now, independent from Vermont, also a member of the Budget Committee. Uh, Senator, good to see you on a Saturday afternoon. Thank you so much for stopping by. We mentioned a moment ago, Senate Democratic leaders heading to the White House at this hour. What can we expect to come from this, from this meeting? Well, I think what we can expect uh, to come from this meeting is unity in demanding uh, that the extremists in the Republican caucus in the House do what the American people want. And the issue is pretty clear. It is not a major ask to allow the United States government to continue functioning. It is not a major ask uh, that the United States government pays its bills so that for the first time in the history of this country, we default, create an international financial crisis. And what your commentators a moment ago were saying is absolutely true. Interest rates will spike for mortgages, for car loans, etc. Businesses will go under, unemployment will go up. It will be in all likelihood a disaster for this country. What I happen to believe is that at the end of the day, the Republican Party remains very dependent on Wall Street and big money interests. And I think those guys are gonna go to John Bader and say, John, listen, you gotta deal with these crazies. You have to have a vote in which all members of the House can vote. And if he does that yeah. at the request of the big money guys, I think we're going to keep the government open, and I think we're going to pay our debts. Hey, Senator, you know, you, you've been in this game a long time, sir. Uh, you've been around uh, Washington, D.C. for a long time. What's happening there? For, for the average person who's, who's been watching this play out over the past 12 days, who first of all probably thought, ah, there's no way the government's going to shut down. Ah, there's no way we're going to default on, on the debt. And here we are, 12th day of the shutdown, five days away from, from a potential default. And, and a lot of folks are watching this play out and, and scratching their heads, really not being able to understand precisely how it's come to this. Okay, and let me tell you what I think. And many people may not just be fully appreciative of it. What has happened in the last several years is the Republican Party has undergone a major transformation. It used to be a, you know, sent the right party. Uh, today it is a being, it, it, for many of the members, it, they are right-wing extremists. And what everybody has got to understand, it's not just that they hate Obamacare and want to repeal health insurance for 20 million Americans. These guys want to abolish the concept of the minimum wage. They want to end Social Security, if not today, then tomorrow. They want to end Medicare as we know it. They want to eviscerate the Environmental Protection Agency, the Department of Energy. What these guys really want, and read what the Koch brothers say, you know, read what some of these people are saying. They want to convert this country into an oligarchic form of society where the economics now, and now, politics Senator, are that, run by a handful of billionaires. Senator, is that fair? Is it, is it fair to say that the entire Republican Party no. wants to turn America into an, in, into an oligarchy? No, what it is fair to say is that the people who fund the Republican Party, like the Koch brothers and other right-wing extremist organizations, who have poured hundreds of millions of dollars into elections and into setting up organizations supporting the Tea Party, yeah. that is exactly what they want to do. Right. I am not saying that every Republican okay. wants that. Senator Bernie Sanders, uh, Dem or